98 FM. 98 FM's Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. Weekdays from 10 a.m. on 98 FM. I put up a post on my public Facebook page uh, late last night that got a huge amount of traction. Uh, I wasn't doing it for attention, by the way. Um, and it divided opinion and caused a lot of controversy and a lot of upset. But I felt that it was, uh, it was my, it's my own Facebook page. So uh, I feel with, like with anybody's Facebook page, whatever they put up is their own opinion and they're quite entitled to put that up. And if somebody doesn't like what you say, unfriend you on Facebook. Okay, well, let me read out your post. <laughs> well, okay? before you read out the post, I have to give some pretext to us as to why the post happened, okay? Because that will, the, the post will then make sense. So uh, yesterday uh, afternoon, I was talking to a female friend of mine. She's a very good female friend of mine. She's a married woman. And she is like... A lot of people who are listening at the moment, she is going through IVF treatment. Her and her husband are going through IVF mm-hmm. treatment. And because, which I don't want to get into, because of medical issues, she couldn't conceive uh, naturally. Uh, one in six, uh, this affects. Yep. And uh, by the way, I told her I'm talking about this. Anyway, I got off the phone to her. It's not the first time I've spoken to her on the phone about, about her having IVF treatment. Her and her husband, let me just put this into, uh, IVF treatment is not free in Ireland, by the way. It's very expensive, Mm. very, very expensive. Her and her husband have had to sell their car. They don't have a problem about this. They weren't moaning about it. They've had to sell their car and they've taken out a credit union loan, a very substantial credit union loan to try and fund the IVF treatment that they're having. She told me yesterday uh, afternoon on the phone that, and no, none of us can ever understand what it must be like for a woman who can't conceive. She said to me she feels like a failure. She cries nearly every second night when she sees uh, other people who are able to conceive uh, so easily. She doesn't begrudge them that. Mm. Um, but she, her, her life has been basically turned upside down because for the last couple of years uh, they've been trying to conceive. So at the moment they are going through very, very expensive IVF treatment at a, a certain clinic uh, in Dublin. And it's literally bleeding their balance dry. They don't have very good jobs. They have normal jobs uh, like you or I. They're not rolling in the cash. And they are absolutely putting every single penny of their life into this. Okay, well, uh, 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 okay sorry, so that was the pretext. Let, let, me, let me read that was the pretext. part of your um, post on Facebook. You're talking about exactly what you just talked about. And then, yeah. this is the bit that pisses me off. The government is happy to fund and spend millions a year on drug treatment for addicts whose addiction is usually self-inflicted, yet won't financially help out couples who just want to start a family. Talk about priorities. I don't know about you, but I'd rather my taxes going towards helping a couple who so desperately want a child than someone who decided to inject heroin into themselves. I don't expect everyone to agree with me, but I make no apologies for having more compassion for a couple struggling to have a baby than a person struggling with a self-inflicted addiction. That's what your post said. That's not all the post, by the way. So you're kind of taking it out of... I know you you, you didn't have the time to read the whole but thing. But the first out. bit is just about what you just said. Yeah. So after getting off the phone to my friend who was very upset yesterday about how she can't afford IVF treatment, I put that post up on Facebook and the Liberals and the, the Socialists and the Snowflakes um, went to town on me and said I was disgusting. The post was disgusting, that I was demonising junkies, um, which I, I don't know how where they got that from. And that's why I wanted to read it out today and find out how many people actually uh, agree with the point that I'm making. And it was an emotive post. I was very emotional after talking to this girl because she, her life is turned upside down. And I find it abhorrent. I find it disgusting that a country would rather spend money on junkies getting clean than it would on a woman who so desperately wants a baby. Nobody should be denied a baby who wants a baby. Okay, I would agree. However... Is now, don't n- you start coming to tell me. Don't no, 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 I, I don't need you uh, shouting at me as well. I'm not going to shout over at this. you. Um, however, it, it, it isn't a um, debilitating condition not being able to have a baby. That's a disgusting thing but to say. But it's not. That's a disgusting thing to say. But it's not. It's That's not. so offensive to people. How is it? It's not going to kill you. There, because there are women listening at the moment. Oh, you don't think it could kill you? You don't think a woman, a woman's life could be at risk if she's so depressed and so upset because she can't get pregnant? Okay, let me, re- <clears throat> let me read out a message, and it says, 
Um, F you, Dixon. Oh, here we it's go. not my problem, her body system or his, his blank shooting is causing them baby problems. They want kids, they have to pay for it. A drug addict can get treatment and maybe get back to work. Your mate's already working, so she doesn't need uh, to cause me, cost me money. Uh, your gas, Dixon, I couldn't give an F about that couple, just like they couldn't give an F if I uh, can meet my mortgage. Tell them to get back to work instead of asking you to put up topics for them to encourage the Irish Women's Council to go on and say the government should pay. I've heard enough. Oh, big, oh, big, big brave man on your text message. Again, come on the air and debate with me. He says he can't. I'm oh, in work. Uh, isn't, isn't that convenient? Isn't that convenient? That you, that's your way of chicken and out of a debate. Anyway, I want to hear how you feel about that post. I want to see how many people actually agree. I, I, I firmly believe that the vast majority of you agree with what I said in that post, that you would rather your taxes uh, going on uh, couples who can't conceive than going on drug, add drug addicts. The majority, okay, not uh, everyone, the majority of whom only have themselves to blame for being on drugs. Nobody, okay, can, nobody yeah, holds can, can someone say, down. Can I just say two things? Okay. Not being able to have a baby is not life-threatening. That I don't agree. It's not life threatening. It can You're, not, your going life. It can You're not going to die. You're not going to die for not being able to have a baby. Okay, but let you, me stop you there. Let me stop you there. If you're a woman, if you're a woman who cannot conceive, who cannot conceive, how do you feel about Adrian's comment, which I feel is disgusting, I defamatory said, I, comments? Hang on, I said it's not life threatening. It's not. How do you know? It's not life threatening. You, you can't have a baby so you're going to die. You'll no. never understand it. You and your wife at the time sat down and decided to conceive and were able to conceive uh, fairly, fairly easy and you had two beautiful children. Yep. So how dare you get up on your pulpit and, and, and dare to get inside the head of a, of a person who cannot conceive. I said conceive. it's not life-threatening. How, how dare you? have no idea. Don't be exaggerating. I said it's not life-threatening. It is not going to kill you if you can't have a baby. However, if you're a chronic drug addict, and yes, I accept that it is possibly uh, self-inflicted, um, it is it, more likely to kill you. Think of the amount of drug overdoses we have in this country every single year. These are people dying. OK, so if treatment can be offered to them and if they can get off the drugs and uh, become productive members of society, is that not money well spent? OK, let's find out. Text or WhatsApp us now and let's do a quick poll. Text or WhatsApp 87 Simple answer. Agree or disagree? Do you agree with my post or do you disagree with my post? OK, all I said was as a taxpayer, I'd prefer my taxes to go um, on uh, fertility treatment for couples who desperately want a baby than a junkie. I'm sorry, I'll stop using the word junkie because I don't even particularly like the word. On a drug addict. Is that, is that okay to use that word drug addict? Will the left be happy with that? Is that acceptable? Lads, twice in one week I agree with Jeremy. We should prioritise looking after uh, the people who actually participate as functioning members of society who work and pay tax over those who have messed up their lives o over their own poor choices. Uh, I'm not saying we shouldn't help people with addiction issues, but we need to start taking care of those who are willing to be good citizens, says uh, that message. Text or WhatsApp us 0877 98 98 98. Do you agree with what um, Jeremy says or uh, do you disagree? Text uh, agree or disagree to 0877 98 98 98. Um, let me go to line one, and that's Irene. You're on 98 FM. Hi, Irene. Hi, Jacqueline. Well, good morning to you. What did you want to say? Uh, my point is, I looked at a documentary, didn't I, actually, about that on RTE, and I was absolutely shocked to see the amount of money that young couples were scrimping and scraping to make to have it, you know, to go into. IVF, you know, I mean, mm. I, my heart went out to them and they got no help whatsoever, you know, and when you see the disappointment when they fail, it's horrendous, you know what I mean, my heart went out to them and I'm saying to myself, there's more quangos in this country than anything else that are not required, that that money should be put in to help people who cannot really afford, they were trying to pay a mortgage, they both worked and my heart went out to the three couples involved. You know, and to see the disappointment every time, you know, it didn't take, you know, the sperm or the egg or whatever. It was heartrending. But one lady was saying 22,000 so far they had spent. And my heart went out and they should be means tested and helped out. If the government can give themselves £5,000 rise every January, surely to God they can hold off and put out instant health service. And that's what I'd like to say. And, um, OK, the, the one thing that I was saying is that having a baby is... Yeah. A choice. Yes. 
It's not a necessity, is it? I know, that's yeah. It's, well, not, it's not life-threatening, is it? No, it's not life-threatening, but I do think they need some kind of financial help, uh, Adrian, because it was heart-rending, you know what I mean? And uh, Yeah, and I, I, I saw the documentary you know, myself, uh, is, Irene, yeah. and it was Quite very touching. touching. And, I, very touching. and uh, Jeremy's right in what he said a moment ago, that yeah. uh, when I had, oh, my, two, with, when I had yeah. my two kids all those years ago, they were easily uh, conceived and so like on. My own um, that, but yeah. I do appreciate that um, somebody might have difficulty uh, conceiving a child. Yeah. But does that mean, uh, this is the bit that, uh, look, I get how difficult it is. I get the cost yeah. of it. I get that these yeah. people have had to uh, take out loans. The same applies, though. It costs a fortune if you want to go and adopt a child from Russia know, or Romania yeah. or yeah. China or whatever. That costs a fortune as well. I know, and that's why I think the government should help them, you know, the health service, because I look at it this way. If they can do take away mom boobs in the health service for free or, in, in, you know, do your breasts for free, hmm. it, it, is a, it, is an, it is a condition. It is a medical condition that you can't conceive. So it should be medically treated. Do you know what I mean? It is a medical condition. In regards of, of junkies or whatever, drug addicts, whatever you want to call them, I do believe they need help. I don't agree with a, drug, a drop in drug push a needle in. I think there should be more centres help there to help the drug addicts, you know. But on that particular issue, when I think of the money that's wasted in this country, you know, and people are so desperate for things, you know, that there should be some kind of help for those people, definitely, you know. All right, stay there for one second, Irene. Six seven nine seven ninety eight one is our telephone number. You can text or WhatsApp the program on zero eight seven seven ninety eight ninety eight ninety eight zero eight seven seven ninety eight ninety eight ninety eight. Um, I'd love to find out how, whether or not you agree with what Jeremy was saying or not. Uh, he's talking about friends of his who've uh, gotten up to their uh, neck in debt, all to fund IVF treatment. Uh, because of a fertility issue that is outside their control. Uh, they say, uh, sorry, he went on to say, uh, the government is happy to fund and spend millions a year on drug treatment for addicts uh, whose addiction is usually self-inflicted, yet won't financially help out couples who just want to start a family. Talk about priorities uh, is uh, part of what Jeremy's message said. Um, I don't know about you, but I'd rather my taxes going towards helping a couple who so desperately want a child than someone who decided to inject heroin into themselves. 67979081 is our uh, telephone number. I'd love to hear from you on this. I'm disgusted at those men texting in, undermining this problem. It is soul-destroying not being able to um, have a baby. It can ruin marriages, bankrupt people, and it may not be life-threatening, but it can, can kill a woman's soul. I'm disgusted at those men. They will never understand. John, you're on 98FM. How are you, John? Good morning, Adrian. Good morning, How are you? John. I'm very good, thank you. What did you want to say? Well, I agree with Jeremy there totally. And I would go one step forward by saying these liberals make me sick. And you already know that, and so does everybody else. But the point I'm going to make, in here, uh, to make here, here is a woman trying to have a child. And here are these same liberals, given out to Jeremy, who have voted in abortion into this country to take away the rights of the unborn child. So these, these liberals can never open that trap to anybody about IVF treatment or anything else. Mm. And they should, quite frankly, just shut their mouths and go under the rock they came from. Because, they're not, because these people cannot lecture anybody after bringing abortion into this country. Okay, and that's a, the it's a, a child. completely separate issue now, no, to be it's honest. Not, it is, fertility generally. treatment and the unborn child is the one thing. It's trying to have a child. I mean, this woman uh, genuinely wants to have a child. And anybody out there who actually cannot conceive a child naturally and wants to have a child should be helped. Within reason, should be helped. Within reason, should be helped. Within reason. If you have plenty of money and you can fund it yourself, go fund it yourself. If it's the case, you can't. You can't. And Jeremy is right. We are wasting money on junkies and everybody else when these people, at the same time, yes, they do have a problem, but they do have a responsibility for their own lives as well. This woman, if it's a medical uh, problem beyond their control, well, then it's beyond their control. So the fact okay, but let, let me read out this uh, message, and it says, Nobody chooses to be a drug addict. I'm a recovering addict nine years clean. It's only a small amount of addicts that commit crime to fund their habit. There's so many more that work, but you only hear about the addicts who commit crime. 
In other yeah, words, that... not every drug addict is a bad person. Not every drug yeah, addict uh, chose. I mean, Jeremy says you, you, you know, you choose to take heroin or whatever. And yes, obviously, that first decision to take heroin was your choice, but you didn't choose to become an addict. Adrian, anybody who gets into drugs, firstly, it's their own choice to do so. Secondly, the fact is, everybody in this life is responsible for their own self their own recovery, their own this, their own that. We are responsible for ourselves, our own actions. Most of these, most of these liberal groups out there are, you know, are getting paid for looking after these people. I would say to these liberal groups now, you go out and do, you go out and look after these people for nothing. Do it for nothing. Instead of these big... There, CIA, there, there, there are CEOs people, John, there are, there are people out every day of the week helping them. Yeah, in fairness. but you have groups out there now who are going, oh, look, Russ, I'm, I'll be great. You go out and look after these people and do it for nothing and don't do it for the glory of being, you know, oh, look, aren't we a great group here? We're looking after the homeless or we're looking after uh, drug addicts or we're looking after this, that, you know. But the point is well made by Jeremy. Hmm. Okay, stay there. Stay stay there for a second, John. Stay there. Uh, As someone who has had problems over the last six years conceiving, I completely agree with what Jeremy said. Why can't we even get our own tax paid back? It's very easy to say it's a choice to have children when you have uh, the uh, option, says uh, that message. Joan, you're on Dublin's 98FM. Hi, Joan. Hi, yes. Now, Joan, what do you want to say on this? I just agree with Jeremy. I think, like, not being able to have kids, like, it's not a choice. You were taking heroin or taking drugs. It's it's your choice. why, Why shouldn't they be funded? Why shouldn't they get the help that they need to have a child? And especially because as a, 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 take taxes. perhaps, and I'm, I'm only throwing this into the argument, perhaps because not being able to have a child isn't a life-threatening condition. It doesn't make any difference. If it, it, it does make a difference, right? But, but what I'm saying is, if you take drugs, yeah, mm-hmm. and you you decide to take drugs, but then you, you turn around and you ask why you take drugs. You're looking, you use an excuse, like, you're just looking for sympathy, like, oh, I took drugs because of this happened in my life, that happened in my life. Like, I know people, including myself, that's had lots of sh- stuff happen to them over the years in their life. Like, do you know what I mean? Hard life fell on hard grounds and whatever, and didn't turn to drugs. I, 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 I myself didn't turn to drugs. I could have, but I didn't. Mm. And uh, oh. look, I, I could say the exact same thing. Uh, I never turned. Well, I did turn to drugs of some sort. But I, it's a choice. Smoked, I smoked, you know what I mean? Not being I able to have cigarettes. a child is not a choice. Yeah. Okay, but let, let me read out some more messages. Um, I had a miscarriage back in May and it was devastating. We've been trying to get pregnant again and it still hasn't happened. Every month it doesn't happen. My life crumbles again. Um... Sorry, uh, again, uh, it gets me so down in the dumps, my heart is constantly broken about the fact that I'm still not pregnant. The only thing that has gotten me through this horrible stage in my life is the fact that I have a daughter and I know I can conceive and carry a child naturally. If I didn't have uh, have that to cling on to, I can't say I wouldn't be suicidal. Men really don't understand the hurt women go through. The one thing we're uh, put on this earth for is to reproduce uh, and we can't do it. Drug addicted uh, choose to put drugs in their system knowing the consequences. It sickens me they get the help and uh, these people who long for a baby put themselves into so much debt. This country is so backwards, says uh, that message. Stacy, you're on 98FM. Hi, Stacy. Hey, how are you? Why are you annoyed over this? Because I suffer with endometriosis, which means that it's harder for me to have kids and I'm in severe pain all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's really pissed me off that you're sitting there saying it's not life threatening. I lay on the floor in the matter hospital and I was there 19 hours, severe pain, curled up in a ball and only for a woman begging a nurse to help me. No one was helping me. They brought in every junkie you can imagine was treated. There was another elderly woman. She was left there 26 hours on an oxygen tank. A 22-year-old girl that had a stroke. None of us were treated. But that, that, that's, was- hang on, hang on, Stacey. That's all disgraceful. Uh, we only spoke the other day in this programme about the disgraceful carry-on in A&E units uh, all over Dublin. So that is disgraceful. 
No, but it's always the same thing. And then you're turning around saying it's not life threatening. I begged them. I literally begged them to take my womb out. I literally sat there and begged the doctor. I said, if you don't help me, I'll take a scalpel and I'll take it out myself because of the pain. You've left me four years. Women in this country are left over four years for an operation for the likes of endometriosis that can stop them from becoming infertile. I have another friend who was only told the other week that she can die of a blade because she's after being left without treatment and now she has to wait another year they have cut the fertility and all the stuff that women need in this country to basically nothing and they're putting the money into helping people that sorry most of them not all of them but most of them don't deserve it you sit on the bus and you see junkies off their face on crack and absolutely meldy with their, all their kids with them they don't deserve to have them kids and I'm sorry they don't the ones that go and get help do but most of them don't deserve it there's women out there that would literally do anything to have a child anything to have a child and they get nothing in this country like me i was told that if i need to have ivf i'm not entitled to get help for that because thank god i'm blessed with one child but my daughter might never have a sibling she might never have a brother or sister Mm. because i'm not entitled to get that help but yet i walk down the road near where my mum lives and there's a clinic and nearly every corner of that road to help people to get their new, like clean syringes and to get their treatments and stuff that's not fair on the people like so many women so many women have fertility issues and you're sitting there saying that's not life threatening you don't know the implications that is when you're walking down the road and you see a brand new baby with a junkie parent that junkie's not even looking after that baby and all you want to do is turn around and smack the all, junkie all and I, be like all you're I was not doing all I was doing Stacey is comparing want. how uh, you know, it's easy to give out about drug addicts. I give out about them myself, for God's sake. But somebody who's a drug addicted person can die from that addiction. And so okay? can a woman that who can't, can't have children how? when she's literally. Because the depression that comes with it. Or when you have a condition where you're so. When you have the likes of endometriosis and you literally cannot get up off the floor because of the pain going through your body and you're wishing death or you're lying in a hospital shaking and your blood pressure's through the roof because your body is literally crumbled in pain and you're begging them to literally cut you open to remove your womb to stop the pain because you know that there's more of a chance that you're not having kids anyways because you've been told that and you're telling me that oh well the junkie's this and I'm sorry but I didn't choose to be in this position like no woman chooses to turn around and be infertile I have another friend that would do anything to have a child anything to have a child and she works her arse off and she still can't afford because the price is ridiculous for IVF treatments and she would do anything to be, to be a mother and she can't have that right and yet like that's not her choice that's not her choice it's the country has failed so many women and so many more women would be less infertile or have less issues if they stop cutting the budgets where it needs to be put where the money needs to be put to help women but instead, it's getting put into places it shouldn't be. The same when you see with the same thing, and I've said it before, if a junkie has a baby and then they can prove they can look after a child and get treatment, great, let them have another one. Otherwise, they shouldn't be allowed to have kids. Simple as, and the money should but be put uh, to uh, help sorry, other how, women. How do you possibly stop people having children, Stacey? I don't care what they have to do. Sterilise them. I don't give a shit. Because what you're at, it's really after oiling me up. Because I've I'm on four years waiting, four years for treatment for over four years now left to get treatment to be, then be told that the, even my own doctor has told me the older you get now the less likely and your chances are cut because of your condition and I've had an operation previous where I had to have tubes removed and stuff so it's not when you're sitting there saying that oh, it's not life threatening it actually is life threatening and a lot of the conditions that women have that make them infertile actually are life threatening conditions when you can bleed out and stuff. So don't sit there and turn around and say, oh, well, it's not life-threatening if you can't have a baby, because it actually is. Both physically and mentally it can be. So you have no right to say that. Well, sorry, uh, but that's really I've, what I have every like. right to say whatever I want, Stacey. We'll yeah, agree, we're going sure to we're gonna have to agree. We're going to have to agree. We're going to have to agree to disagree. Stay there for one second. 6797981 is our telephone number. You can text or WhatsApp the programme. 0877 98, 98, 98. Dave, you're on 98 FM. Hello, Dave. All right, Adrian. Dave, tell me your story. All right. Um, so myself and my missus, we have, uh, we have a wonderful, beautiful eight-year-old boy. But we've been trying to have kids for, I say, since he was about two. She's gone pregnant six times, and each time it's ended in a miscarriage. The last time she had a miscarriage, uh, she ended up in hospital for a week because her blood pressure dropped to very dangerously low levels. Mm-hmm. She had to get a blood transfusion. She lost so much blood. 
right? Um, we've been told that he might have been the exception to the rule, that we might never be able to have any more kids. And if she does get pregnant, it might be dangerous to her. Because when she was pregnant with him, we were in the hospital, I'd say, nearly every weekend and weeknights. Uh, she was getting bleeds for, I'd say, about six months. It was a horrible, tough, tough pregnancy for her. Like, do you know? And, like, to see money being spent... Now, look, I believe we should help people with addiction problems because that problem is never going to go away. And we need to... But this, the whole, like, methadone program doesn't work. It's been proven it doesn't work. We need to get tougher about this and stop being so softly and treating these people with kids' gloves. Taking heroin, taking drugs is choice, Okay. Having children isn't just a choice, it's a biological imperative. Any living organism out there is hardwired to reproduce and procreate. Yes, I understand, for, I, I understand that, Dave. Yeah, but for a woman not to be able to have kids, men, we don't feel it as much. Because, like, for a fella, you know yourself, for a fella, you don't really feel like a parent until you see your child first. But for a woman not to be able to have children, it's, it's, it's horrible and it's, it's damaging to their mental health. But I'm not even going to say just, like, just junkies. There are people out there on the dole claiming benefits who, who won't stop having children like I live in rural Ireland there's a one down here she collects over a grand every uh, fecking children's allowance day because she's so much kid her and her partner have never worked I've worked straight through the recession when other people didn't have jobs I was getting up on a Monday morning and going to work when all my friends were on the dole and they were going, going on Sunday sessions I, I couldn't go out with them because I had to get up for work Monday morning like how much does a person who works pay in PRSI and tax over the lifetime that they work. Like, there should be some system in place so that someone, a couple going through IVF, maybe not pay for the whole payment, treatment, but go 50-50 with them. Do you know, help them out some bit. Give them tax breaks. Do something for them. Do you know what I mean? How much money leaves this country for children who aren't even residents within the state? Hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, if, you're, like, if they want us to be proper, productive members of society and good citizens, give something back, back for God's sake. How, how much are we being screwed? With road tax, with insurance. Uh, okay, you see, but, uh, what annoyed a lot of people, and I can understand what uh, what bothered them, is I, I, I can't see for the life of me why there was a need to lump drug addicts into a post about uh, the non-funding of fer- fertility treatment. I don't see why that connection well, no, has to be made. I, look, I wouldn't lump in just drug addicts. I throw them in with it. But I'm also talking about people who won't get off their arses and get a job. I'm also talking about the fact that what is it, something like 40 million euros a year leaves the state to in child benefit for children who aren't even resident here. Well, okay, you know, stay, stay there for a second, well, no, David. And, and if, well, hang on, hang on. Let me just bring Jeremy back in for a second. The one thing that bothered people about your post most bothered a few people. Okay, a, a I, of people. I actually agree that IVF treatment should be funded. You should get tax you breaks all, you or you all, should you get also, tax returns. You also, said, or... you also pretty much said a woman that can't have a baby should more or less get over it. I never said that. Don't, no, but that... don't start making stuff up. I never said that. I never said that. What I did say, or what I am saying is, I agree that IVF treatment should be funded. You should get tax back or something. Well, you do get tax back. However, tax relief on however I don't see why you lumped drug addicts into that statement. Because the point was... You said... Yep. Um, I know uh, what I said. You don't need the, to repeat it to me. The point I made was... The government was, should be funding if it. If the government can... If the government, yes, has the money to, to pay for methadone for junkies, surely it has the money to pay for couples who want to have a baby. That's the, And if that's unreasonable, then I'm living in the wrong country. Because I think that's a very reasonable thing to suggest. Okay, let me read out uh, another message. Um, and it says, The f***ing cheek of Adrian sitting on his high horse talking about something that he's no idea about and has never had to go through. My wife and I are together 10 years and want nothing more than our own little family. We've gone through four miscarriages and an ectopic pregnancy, which is life-threatening. And she had to go for emergency surgery with internal bleeding. So educate yourself. Let me go to Marco, who's uh, listening to us in Florida in the United States. Marco, welcome to 98FM. Good morning, Adrian. How morning, are you? morning, Marco. How are you? Marco, tell me about uh, your IVF journey. Right. Uh, me and my wife have been together for the last five years. Um, we've gone through two IVF treatments at a cost of $22,000 each. Um, we have... It has gotten to the point now where, you know, both IVF treatments failed. It has gotten to the point where I have even offered or um, told my wife that I'm willing to sell the house just to, to go ahead with as many IVF treatments as 
uh, needs to. You, the injections that come with each IVF treatment or prior to uh, each IVF treatment are, are unreal. Um, and those injections uh, increase the chances of a woman getting uh, some sort of cancer. So mm -hmm. if a woman is willing to go through all of that, if, you know, taking in consideration the, I'm sorry, taking in consideration what, uh, what risk she's taking, and she's still uh, willing to go through that, just for a child, you can kind of understand how, what, what an effect it has, you know, through day-to-day -day life. I'm sorry, how much money, how much money have you spent on IVF so far? In total, forty-four. How much? Forty-four thousand. Forty-four grand. I mean, that's 000. that's half a house. But he's really. talking. He's talking about selling the house. Or, yeah. Uh, um, but yep. uh, let me ask you. In, Marco, in other words, what he's trying to say, Adrian, and you won't understand this. What Marco's trying to say is, a woman would walk over a mile of hot coals in order. Some to, women, not all women. Some women. No, there more, are some women who uh, choose to live life baby free. And more, more parents. And what I'm saying, any woman that has a maternal instinct would walk over a hot cold. She'd stick pins in her eyes. She'd take any amount of drugs in order to get pregnant. Let me ask you, Marco. This is, this has put a strain on your relationship, has it? It has. Yeah, we have even we've looked everywhere. We've looked at Ireland. I think Ireland is coming in at about six thousand euros, give or take, uh, each IVF treatment. I don't know how how right it is. Uh, my wife has been contacting a few clinics over there. Um, we, we've looked at other countries as well. Um, it, it, like, the, she is trying everything just not to lose hope. Um, I mean, and I, I don't know. Is it, is it worth that much that you'll remortgage the house or sell the house or whatever? Uh, oh, yeah. Um, to, uh, you know... Uh, to to have a healthy relationship at at this point, yes. I I mean, you know, you are prepared I, to do We've that. been together for the last five years, so anything. I mean, a house I can buy it again. Okay. Um, thanks for talking to us, Mark, and thanks for listening to us every. No I know you listen imagine, regularly in Florida. Thanks imagine being that desperate for a baby agent that you're willing to sell your own house. No, I, to, I can only imagine. I can't. need a new hip. Says this message. It's depressing me. I can't get intimate with my partner. Stops me providing for my family. It's depressing, but I don't get help. Should I be helped financially? Where do you draw the line? Are you comparing needing a new hip to needing a baby? Seriously. Is that person got both, a brain? Both I think I think you need, on, on I think you need a brain uh, transplant. Both there, aren't life transplant. threatening. His life isn't in danger because he can't have a hip okay, replacement. Adrian, part of He's the, very uncomfortable okay, part, and his, his life isn't happy because he can't part have Part of one. the whole debate in the, the abortion and the, the repeal of the aid referendum over the last couple of years that we've been hearing, yes, is the whole thing about um, the, the right for a woman to have an abortion mm -hmm. if her mental health is, is... And we legislated for that, correct? Did no, we, we are. We're in the middle we are, of doing we're in the middle. Yeah. So are, are we trying to say as a country um, that we're prepared to give compassion to a woman whose mental health is in a bad state to abort a baby, but we're not prepared to give a woman help whose mental health is in a bad state you can't conceive. Is that what we're saying as a country? Is that the way we're going to treat women? But that is the way. We're going to show... That, we're going that to is the way it happens at this okay, minute. that's lovely, that is. Beautiful. Um, Darren, you're on 98FM. How are you, Darren? How are you? Good, Darren. What's you, you're a former addict. Yeah, that's correct. I'm a former addict. Uh, I, I did walk for 25 years, and then I won't even go into the issues why I went on drugs, but I did get help... And I'm um, now walking uh, 10 years straight. Now, Man. during that time, my sister, she was having trouble uh, trying to have babies. And, you know, she, she and her husband, they spent a fortune trying on it. And they never even once looked at me. And I don't know where the comparison... Or, and this is... Darren, sorry. Abortion and drug addicts got lumped in. Mm. But you're Darren, 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 hang on a second. Hang on a second, Darren. One and one is social. Say, hang on a second, Darren. People make comparisons all the time. I'm sure you've done it yourself. When people see the government spending money cleaning the streets and say, why can't we spend it on the homeless? I agree with you. I don't agree with your statement, but I agree with the fact that the government should get women who, especially as my own sister, needed it. Should get help. There's plenty of people Will, that should okay. get help. Will you concede, Darren, that your drug addiction was through your through your own fault? Through, through it was a lifestyle choice, and you only have yourself to blame. Would you concede that? 
we can see that it was through uh, depression and mental issues, yes. Okay, but, but the point that Darren is making is, whilst he totally agrees with you that IVF treatment should be funded, he doesn't see, and I don't either, see why you even had to bring drug addicts into that conversation. Why there's didn't plenty, you? Ju- yeah. plenty of other issues and plenty of other cases. That, that money has been wasted on. Because I have more compassion for a friend of mine who is crying herself to sleep every night than I do for someone who's... Ah, listen to me. Listen to no, me. No, 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 no. I have more compassion. No, Why didn't you say it's a disgrace... Uh, Don't tell me what I should have said. They, they Sorry, cleaned the on. streets. Hang on a second. Why did you feel the need to bring drug addicts into it? Don't you... It was irrelevant to your point about them needing to be funding IVF. Okay, first of all, don't tell me what I should and shouldn't say. It's my voice and I'll say what I want to say. I have a question for you, Adrian, and I'm going to wrap up with this one um, because uh, we're after getting at least 50 different text messages. If you're asking me to apologise, what would I apologise for? For making a statement that, generally speaking, um, not being able to have a baby is not a life-threatening condition. Let me just read out one of about 50 text messages. I want Adrian to apologise on 98FM on behalf of any couple who has had fertility problems. Another person says, I won't listen to the show again if, you, if Adrian doesn't apologise for what he said about IVF. It's the Did I say something that's not true? The ball's in your court. Did I say something that's not true? Generally you, speaking, you, you, it is not a life-threatening condition. Just like needing a hip replacement, while it's very uncomfortable, is not life-threatening. So... But then I'll wrap up with this. You gave out to me for for giving out for bringing uh, drug addicts into the same conversation mm-hmm. as IVF. You have brought hip replacements into the same conversation as not being able to have a baby. Shame on you. No, right? all they said and was I, it's I, not life threatening. Really, this is really ninety eight FM's Dublin Talks. Ninety eight FM's Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy weekdays from ten AM on ninety eight FM.